The Behemoth Brewing Company presents the Department of Conversation with Pat Brittenden. Behemoth, give me something hoppy. And we are live streaming with uh, co-leader of the Greens, Marama Davis and Marama. Good evening and welcome to my fireside chat. Kia ora, Pat. I'm really <laughs> Kia ora. pleased. Oh, um, can you hear me? 100%. Oh, awesome. Hey, I was supposed to ask, um, thank you for my first fireside chat. Is that an actual fire there? Yeah, look, see, it's absolutely <laughs> hot, burning hot. Oh, that's, that's brilliant. I couldn't even tell. <laughs> hopefully the, uh, I love you doing you. Hopefully the, uh, the computer won't go to sleep and it'll go dead and your water on the fire will be off. But <laughs> at the moment, it's the fireside chat. Look, for people who are joining us and It'll take a while for people to jump on and join us. But um, having been a talkback host, especially when the Christchurch earthquakes happened, I know that there was, and I experienced as a host, that there was a period of time, people going to bed, you know, people sort of uh, evening time gets dark, people then go inwardly and they start thinking and they start going, <gasps> what's happening? And they, you know what I mean? And I just thought, well, you know, we have the technology. I, I, you know, know a couple of people and we could just have a fireside chat. We could just basically do this. Our, our department of conversation, our podcast is pretty chill and relaxed, as you know, Marama, anyway. Yes. But yes. we could just have a chill, even more so chill, relaxed chat, keep people some company. They can be yeah. watching us on Facebook or YouTube, uh, Twitch or Periscope. If they want, they can join in. Uh, what this isn't is sort of a hardcore Q and A, you know about the world and everything around us. Although I'm sure we'll just talk about that naturally. Yeah. So people are welcome to ask questions. It doesn't mean that your question will get put forward or asked, or just make comments. You're welcome to as well, and just hang out with us in our um in our fireside chat. So welcome. Yeah. Thank you, Pat Kilda and Kilda everybody. Uh, I think that's beautiful actually. And like, who doesn't know what it's like in those later moments and nighttime moments when all the reflection comes in um like who doesn't know what that's like when you're feeling lonely or anxious about everything that's happening now and in honor of the chill aspect of our corridor to keep people company and to give people another form of company i've put my bedroom lamp on to nice. you know <laughs> just in honor of that of that theme of um chill and been a place for people to come and hang out in a really friendly and caring way. Um, no I thought you were going to say you were having a wine, and I thought that's oh, a good idea. I'm going to have a beer. Even, there you go. That would have been Perfect. even better. To be honest, my nighttime sort of relax and enjoyment um, would tend to go to maybe a, a bit of a gin or a nice whiskey, which I love a Lafroig. I've got one, I've got one. I should have blim and sorted that out. I might might actually text the hubby to get him to bring me one in. Yeah, to be honest. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, just whatever it is that people like to do to to chill out and to find a bit of um peace and quiet, eh? So what are you doing during lockdown? I know it's only been sort of uh is it two days? It's it just already is starting to run together. Yeah. But what do you what have you been doing? It, yeah. Yeah, right. What are days when we go into lockdown? Um, just like constant Zoom meetings that, you know, none of this is going to feel very inspiring for anybody, but thick wads of papers and briefings and cabinet papers. Um, I, the, you know, the, the benefit of being at home is obviously I get to see my tamariki every single day and I had just returned home from a 15-day stint away. Wow. Um, so I get to stay put and that is something that I'm, you know, taking the time to feel really grateful for. Just um, also getting to continue um, trying to write a national strategy to prevent family violence and sexual violence at the moment. It's huge. It's one of the biggest things I've ever done. Um, and we're supposed to launch it. Uh, we are going to launch it towards the end of the year. So just bringing all of those meetings together and Zoom conversations, um, going through papers. And also, you know, so there's that sort of mahi. And I'm also, I know how important it is to connect people to help. So I know a lot of the, a lot of the MPs are doing a lot of that in their own local community at the moment, whether it's mm -hmm. getting on the phone and 
or finding out what, how our providers are faring, how they're going, what support they need. So sort of a bit of a mix of that. Um, and then I guess, you know, <laughs> trying to sort of keep my kids with a little bit of structure. Structure's just gone out the window, if we're quite honest. And today we got a bit of sun in Auckland, so we managed to get out into some sunshine and we managed to get out of cabin fever and get out of the house and that was really necessary for all of us as well what ages have you got in the house uh we've got the last three the the, the three babies as i call them in the house yeah. with us my hubby and i um and they are 12 13 and 15 so very much in that sort of grunt grunt teenager speak um very much sort of uh addicted to and tied to their electronic devices and sure. you know so just so it's just trying to manage and balance that out a little bit with a little bit of mental health and well-being um is what hubby and i are both trying to work from home and both running into each other in the hallway trying to get away from each other's zoom meetings <laughs> um it's pretty funny and something that a lot of people know about is there any need for you guys or is there any question about you in particular um kind of heading to wellington for this time period or was it always going to be you know the, the obviously the pm and some people need to be there but yeah, for everybody totally. else really from home is fine you know what what they really want from all of us politicians in particular is to role model that safety and well-being and that means staying put um for those uh who are not necessary it's those essential ministers around the table who need to sort of um, be able to go through with the officials um, but everyone else we need to role model staying put unless absolutely necessary um, because of my home work home situation and not having a sort of appropriate office or spare room what it might mean is I will seek permission to use my Auckland office if I have to, like next week, I've got a whole, I've got to host a whole um, ministerial group meeting for my family violence and sexual violence ministers and right. all of our loads of officials. It's not, I w probably won't feel comfortable um, risking being at home with the risk of teenagers barging in or just not a proper space of quiet to be able to run that meeting. So I yeah, especially, especially with a topic like that as well, eh? Yeah, exactly. And so I yeah, will yeah, probably yeah. Um, seek permission to use our office in the city, which no one else will be able to use, which I will make sure I do safely, all of that stuff. So it's about um, role modeling the the health, the health and safety priority first, like we're asking everyone else in the country to do as well. It's funny, because eh? I remember at the last lockdown, whatever that was, March of last year, there was, we, we, we don't need to go into too many details here, but there was a couple of people who, uh, you know, sort of were, should have been doing better and went out and did various things around the country that yeah. shouldn't have. And I remember there thinking, well, the chances of anything happening and anything getting passed on are very, very slim when one person goes off to do yeah. something, to a beach or something. But the point being is if everyone went off to the beach, yeah. then it would get passed around. So if it's not everyone, but, but this Delta seems... It's Seems pretty gnarly, different. eh? Yeah, it's pretty it, different. it really is. And I think that's why, you know, we are asking a lot of people. We really are. We we understand that. We are asking people to restrict themselves to be able to collectively care for our community, which we would ask even with COVID-19. But this Delta one in particular, I mean, it, it sort of, it's really clear to me um, how much collective effort is needed from us. And to be honest, Pat, a whole lot of people are doing so well. Like, honestly, a lot of people I see in my in my hood, um, in my hood of my community, just really want to help and do their bit. It's pretty heartwarming to see. But, yeah, this Delta stuff, far out, it's a, it's a freaky cat, this one, eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for people who didn't hear, and this is the example I've gone through talking to a couple of people, there was an example given on day one where the pe people were in a hotel in MIQ, opposite sides of the hallway, and I know you know this, Marama, but for people mm. who haven't heard, opposite sides of the hallway, right, in a hotel, their two doors were open and they say for between three and five seconds. And that was yeah. enough time for Delta to go from one side of the hallway 
to the other side of the hallway and infect the person in that room. So as soon as I heard that as an example, I'm like, geez, that's a, that's a pretty good example. If you want to say, yeah, we need to take this one pretty seriously. Like I don't even Hollywood's wildest dreams. Couldn't dream up a (laughs) storyline, a a biochemical storyline like that. That was just astounding to me when I heard about that. And I just, this is why, you know, this is why I'm I'm trying to make do as much as possible to work from home and not have to add extra risk to me getting in my car and traveling and going across town. Just the the more we can stop our movements, eh, the, the better off, the higher, higher chance we have of really being able to to put a lid on this gnarly piece of work. And I think, you know, that freaked me out, eh, Pat? That was like, how is that even possible? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's funny about the Hollywood thing. If you think of it was like an alien invasion or something, yeah. and that was the way you'd go, oh, that's not a very believable yeah, story. Yeah, whatever. Line. Oh, they've gone too far. <laughs> Stupid Hollywood. <laughs> I say that about their, I, I say that about their storylines all the time. <laughs> yeah. I um, When the announcement came the other night, um, I was like one of those many people who got out on the road quite quickly. It wasn't to necessarily go and do or get anything, but there was a job that needed to be done. So I'm like, well, mm. we better go now because we might get mm. stuck. And the roads were, it was unbelievable. I mean, I'm in Dunedin, so we're one, yeah. less than one-tenth the size of Auckland. Yeah. And um, I, I went past the supermarket probably by about 7.20, thinking that that announcement came after 6. Yeah. And a small supermarket in a suburban area, and yeah. the car park was full. And I went, oh, it's pretty full. doesn't look too bad. Yeah. But then there was already a queue out the door around the corner. Is and that right? Down already. Yeah. So it's like, I, I, I mm. get it because people are freaked out. And, I get it. you know, I'm not going to ask you any questions, especially coming from someone who, you know, is working in and alongside people making these decisions. Um, but, you know, I think that this feels like it's not, for the South Island, it's going to be only a three-day thing. It feels like it'll probably be longer than that. To me, and I'm, I'm not going to ask you to comment on that. No, I know what Be- you're saying, yeah. But because the, I read that 15,000 people have left Auckland. I, I mean, I don't mean that like in a bad way because mm-hmm. they're the people who are, don't live in Auckland who have needed to get home. Yeah. So for it to yeah. for it to stay in Auckland will yeah. almost be miraculous. I just, I especially with that example of the of the hotel. Yeah, so. yeah I mean, um, there's, so there's a couple of points in there that are really interesting for me. I had to think, you know, oh, look, I hate supermarkets anyway. I mean, I just hate. <laughs> it's a, it's like, for me, one of those duties, the lowest of my list would probably be, I'm not good at cooking and I probably don't enjoy it. So that's one of the things. And it's similar for me as the supermarket shopping job. But right. so we were driving, we were coming home from the city um, I was actually on my way to Tauranga. I was on my way to the airport at 5.30 p.m. Uh, and then we sort of thought, yeah, I'm not thinking that I'm going to get on a plane and go to Tauranga. So we turned off and went to Marurua home instead. And sure enough, um, the announcement we were listening on the radio just as we pulled into my driveway. And sure enough, ain't no one going anywhere. So I went home. Yep, the supermarkets were pretty full on. Um, I went to the local dairy. It was such a good choice. Yeah, were, yeah. It was, and and we happen. Although I must say, we happen to have such an amazingly stocked local dairy. I'm sort of, I'm, I'm actually thinking might get away with just dairying it for the next few days, you know. Um, but you know what I thought too is, like, it's so rough on people. Many people find it so stressful going supermarket shopping during alert level four and three and so on. I can understand why people would try and get in quick and to be able to have have enough supplies for as long as possible. I can I can understand that. I totally can. Um, I just wasn't going to be part of us. Oh, dairy, dairy. I'm going to go dairy, and that was good. Um, so you know, I. Oh, and and also secondly, just to um, give you some reassurance and security, Pat, um, <laughs> you'd be pleased to know I'm not part of the decision making cabinet in terms of those health decisions. James and I, as non cabinet ministers, um, aren't a part of those discussions. So it's okay; you won't have to talk to me for any <laughs> responses. But can I make an educated? <laughs> Can I make an educated observation, I suppose, sure. is um, 
I know of so many people talking about how they transferred between islands, North and South Island, over these days have been part of the locations of interest mm -hmm. in Auckland um, and then moving around the country. And, um, you know, that's why I too could understand, firstly, why we've got to lock down the whole country. We've just got to minimise all that movement as much as possible. And secondly, um, we're trying to find old sort of cases and track back through the full round of transmission. So we, it doesn't, it, certainly the experts are, the experts are feeling that we're nowhere near have found all the cases yet. So, you know, I can understand people thinking, you know, it's, that's thinking that there's a high chance of a longer alert level four than what we might than what we might think. That's my and look, that's my yeah. best estimated guess. Yeah. Well, the re the reason I didn't want to ask you necessarily and push you is because I, I get it that you're not part of that decision making circle. But I'm sure as a politician uh, and someone who is, you know, I mean, look at the latest polls. It's like if the election was tomorrow, it would be a Labour Green Alliance to yeah. make a government. So yeah. so I'm and, and that's not what this is about. This is not about mind you. I never do kind of hard nose political stuff i do i do fun and cheeky questions um, it's all relevant but, though. it's all relevant yeah but i think i i think that it just feels like i saw northcote college tonight there's another yeah. case there yes. um i saw that one at the was it aut with 85 students in the room where they were infectious yeah. Yeah. i just I, I i i was surprised that the whole country went into lockdown but again i understand why mm -hmm. uh, what i was wondering though is as someone who is a minister outside of cabinet, mm. when do you find out? Do you find out with the rest of us, or do you get like a twenty-minute heads up? This is what's yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. You've you've sort of hit it on the head. There is, um, we get a little bit of a heads up. Um, we're not at the decision-making table, but just as sort of ordinary courtesy um, uh, across across Parliament, actually, um, we get a bit of a heads up, which I really appreciate. Um, it just sort of helps us to prepare a little bit, but I guess practically we're sort of, in reality, we're sort of finding out where when everyone else does because we still don't, we still don't spread that, you know, that awareness, of course, till everyone else knows as well. So we do a yeah, little yeah. bit of prep in the background, but yeah, not as um, we we basically act on it when everyone else does. So are you watching the one o'clock bulletin with the rest every of us every day, every yeah. day? Um, I find in particular um, sometimes the questions can just help get some of that relevant um, information out a little bit more. Um, but it's I just I, I have to be I have to say I do find it really interesting just this whole just the whole science of contact tracing and genome mm. sequencing oh i do find that a little bit fascinating and got to give it to our scientists and lab workers and testers and experts who who pull all of this apart and work through the night to do it you know and they're doing it for us to get on top of the spread 100% and it's and it's it's I don't, know, I don't find it frustrating. I was having a conversation with someone today who is not a big fan of vaccines and yeah. you see people doing anti-lockdown things. I, I did this and I don't, I don't have it with me, so I can't bring it up. But if actually my name here, here, that name is my Twitter handle as well. So people can go right. have a look at my Twitter handle and they'll see it for themselves. But there was an online argument, the great place for arguments, the, the best place for arguments where everyone can be sensible and normal. Anyway, there was an online argument going out on about, you know, lockdowns and, you know, this government doing too much. And I'm like, well, you know, they should have been prepared. Why aren't we running the, the vaccinations 24 seven? I'm like, well, dude, they don't have the staff to do that. And yeah. if they did set up to run 24 seven and they were empty, meaning there wasn't a lockdown, you'd be the yeah. same person going, Oh, what a bloody waste of money that is sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah. I, I went to that world info page that yep. we were all checking last lockdown. And I pulled out all the countries that were between four and a half million and five and a half million. And I just went, look at New Zealand's numbers. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay at this point. And I'm not like a patsy that's always going to be there, but I'm okay mm -hmm. at this point, continuing to trust the, mm. the direction and what we're doing. Because if you look at those numbers, so for example, Ireland is just below us. And mm. I think it's Costa Rica is just above us. Mm. Both of them have had more than 5,000 deaths. 
So we've had, what is it, 29? And 29 is horrible for those people in those families. Absolutely. 29 is too many. But my goodness, I want us to keep our, our number of harmed and dead as low as possible. Um, the strain on our health system needs us to get on top of this infection. There is a bit of a, you know, there's a bit of a sinister thread of narrative happening, Pat, because of how successful Aotearoa has been yeah, at yeah. getting on top of our infections every single time. That we take a well-being and collective health care approach and that we prioritise that and the fact that that actually ends up also being the best economic approach as well because funny thing, having your people well <laughs> is really good for your economy and for your businesses and your community fiscal health. Funny yeah. thing, so... People aren't appreciating that evidence, Pat. And so there is a deep narrative that is intentional and purposeful to try and maintain that we are taking the wrong approach. So I don't waste my time with trying to push back on that narrative. All we do is keep putting up what our values are, what we care about as a, as a country, how that's working. Our collective care and well-being is a priority. It's working. We're showing the world how leadership should be and how communities should be. And I'm really, really proud of that. And I try not to give that narrative my time of day, just uphold our own story. It's a little bit like you sometimes hear like fans at a sports stadium start chanting, look at the scoreboard. You know, like yeah. when they want to, when they want to kind of embarrass the other team or kind of point out how well they're, they, they start chanting, look at the scoreboard. And I kind of feel the same. It's like at the moment, the right decision. I, I still think we've had a mix of good management and good luck. You mm -hmm. know, there was elements of when there was gaps in the, uh, the border workers, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. There was an element of good sure. luck there, Oh yeah. but, yeah. but still good management on top of that. And and whilst our scoreboard is looking so good, how can you not do anything but back this team? You know, there's this team that's, that's running this, 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 I know, like that. This, this game. Yeah. I like, game. I like, well, and you know, by team, it really is. Honestly, that's not a team of any one group of people, not politicians, not anyone that actually is serious collective work and you know we when we're not trying to be cocky here we're just really proud of what our values are and what we're putting first and we do not want we do not want to live to learn to live with COVID-19 with Delta we want to stamp on it we do not want to sacrifice more people being sick more people passing away and dying from this. It's not acceptable to us. And I'm really, really proud of that. I also agree with you, Pat. We can always improve. Absolutely we can. Our our borders, our MIQ, our vaccine rollout, absolutely we can improve. Um, and we we apps we cannot be complacent about that. There is there are always things to improve and to learn. Yeah, totally. Um, you're working from home, obviously, as most of us are, although I kind of work from home anyway. Um, <laughs> and obviously you're busy because of the line of work you're in. But are you getting some downtime as well? You know, Farno's at home with you. Are you watching anything on telly? Are you getting a break from this as well? Are you kind of going, two o'clock, I've got an hour. Let's go turn Netflix on and chill with the kids. Is there oh, any downtime at all for you? Um, to, to be honest, there's a bit there's a bit going on in my portfolios even before even before Delta broke out. There's actually um, quite a bit of uh, stress on my agencies at the moment to get a national strategy to cabinet to uphold the relationships across across our stakeholders and across our our groups of people who have the expertise. You know, we're trying to really push a lot of things through at the moment. Um, working from home, don't you reckon? And I, I wonder if there's any other people out there who who get this. Working from home, like on the one hand, it could it can sound like it's a little bit more restful and might have a bit more downtime. I I always feel a particular extra level of exhaustion working from home, wow. I have to say. And I wondered, <coughs> I was thinking about it today. One of the things that I reckon our our 
our brains and physiology tries to grapple with a lot of us home is not supposed to be my workplace especially not me I'm hardly ever at home I'm all around the country and especially in Wellington and for me at least home my body responds to home as a rest place as a sanctuary yeah, also as a sanctuary so now in a working from home sort of um, context my body's constantly almost having to battle uh, and resist this weird understanding that I came to which is no this place is my sanctuary so that constant negotiation is quite uh, mentally exhausting um, also zoom meetings are exhausting or video meetings <laughs> um, are exhausting there's there's something else that happens in that format of trying to hold these quite high stakes conversations across a lot of people all around the country there's something about that being quite exhausting i'm having a good chill time now though pat i'm just relaxing um with the lamp with lampshade um and looking at your beautiful fire by the way Hi. and having a little and this is good this feels like good important but um chill conversation sorry just having some warm beer um <laughs> I agree with you, and I think my, I, because I work from home, I don't identify this enough. But I I find it hard not to be doing something. Yeah, you know, writing, contacting, emailing, that kind of stuff. Um, I built a studio downstairs after the last lockdown, and I try and do as much of my work in this room, sort of making this is my workspace. So no, yeah. I don't leave the property, totally. but I leave the upstairs and come down. I saw, I can't remember who it was. Um, but it was someone who is on sort of Instagram and they're a you know, business advisor expert and they were in MIQ at the time and she had a work bed. Yep. So she had her, uh, like she was in a twin single. So she had a single bed and there was another single bed. And she said that that's where I do my work. I do it on that bed and yeah, only nice. on that bed. I nice. don't bring work into this bed. This is my sleep bed. That's my Got work it. bed. And so while she was in MIQ, she'd made herself a little, you know, little area nice. where she was only doing her work that but makes I, yeah. sense yeah, yeah makes but the thing sense. is the, it's, it's being disciplined enough because i know for me yeah. i'll be taking an, uh, an evening where i'm relaxing but all of a sudden i'm going like this i'm going like you know what i'm you know? watching <laughs> I, i'm watching a movie i could have the laptop on my lap and i could i could watch the movie with the kids and i could be you know at the same time and it's i find that quite hard not to do you know Discipline is exactly the right word, I have to say. I'm Look, I'm a lot better um, years in, years into being a politician. I am a lot better. I've forced myself to become a lot better at presence when I'm with the kids, when I'm with Fano. I need to be properly with Fano and with the kids. And I used to be pretty shit at that, I have to say. But... I've understood that from a well-being and from a sustainability perspective, you've got to ring fence those things a lot better, and I'm a, I'm a lot better at it. But I have to go out of my way to create downtime, and we've got to cut this rubbish of glorifying busyness. We've got to we've really got to stamp on that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know apart from politicians who have to be busy all the time because that's just the nature of the job. So a little bit of a disclaimer there. Um, but downtime, ugh, I crave it. I like a, like a flash Friday night for me would be to sit on the couch with maybe um, Bombay, Sapphire, Bombay Sapphire Gin um, nice. and a really, and a bit of junk food for my brain. Do you know what I'm saying? like something to watch that isn't serious because my work all day is so deep and serious i want a bit of brain food junk food to just something light so something, is it trash trash probably TV? A bit rubbish probably what is a it? bit yeah what are you, what oh, is it gonna be no no i can't no look i cannot class Shits creek as no that's not rubbish that's amazing that's, but it's light it's beautiful yeah. and it's clever and sassy and smart but it's light, right? And yep. and I, um, hang on, it'll be those blimmin, it'll be those blimmin reality TV thingies that my hubby and kids like to watch, which I sort of can't stand, but then I start watching them and I sort of can't stop. Yeah, so. sucked in, <laughs> yeah. You know, totally. you know, like I, about the one of those, about the only one of those I watch at the moment is uh, Catfish. 
MTV uh, program that's, that's on at the, the moment. One of the trashiest out yep, and also totally. deeply exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. Cat, so I watch Catfish um, when I'm talking about trash TV, but not a lot else. I My kids, there's been a few things on. There was a, a terrible dating show. It's probably still on Netflix. I can't think of the name of it. But yeah, it was it was quite an interest. You know, when Big Brother started, Big Brother was quite an interesting yep. sociological well, experiment. It really was. Back. Yeah, yeah, but when it started, it really was. Same as Survivor. It was quite interesting, like, how this like. team works together and yeah. that sort of thing. There's one that came out a few years ago. I don't know the name of it. Someone watching might mention it in the in the comments, and I'll pick up on it. Um, but it's 20 people, 10 guys, 10 girls in a house, typical dating. Oh. But, but they've been tested, and there is a perfect match for them. And the game is actually to find your perfect match. No. Yeah, so it's a bit, it's a, it's complete trash. Don't get me wrong. There's no PhDs <laughs> being written about this, but it's quite interesting to see these. You know what it's like: the twenty-five-year-old millennials, tanned and tall, and got everything in the right place, falling for someone, going into this room to see if it's their perfect match, and it's not, and then being <laughs> destroyed. And the idea is, there's a million bucks to win. And it's 50,000 for each person if all 10 find their perfect match. So if you wow. find your perfect, if all of them find their perfect match, they win. Right. And they all win. And if yep. one's wrong, none of them win. So it's all <gasps> or nothing. So oh, that's a high stakes. Wow. I'm going to have to text you. I'll take, I'll go find out the name of it and text you. Please really, do. I'm going to like upstairs. totally back watch those episodes. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm at the moment watching a thing called Cocaine Cowboys one of those documentaries on netflix that is following through the sort of 80s and 90s cocaine run through america Whoa. And the, fascinating and the, as. yeah it is really interesting and the uh, billy corbin is the is the director and the producer of it i'm hopefully going to have him on a sort of regular oh. podcast in the next few weeks have a talk to him but it's fascinating to basically see how these guys you know became billion with billions of dollars and then eventually all Got. I mean, I was talking to someone yeah. the other day. If you get into the world of crime, I, I don't see too many people who survive a world of crime for their whole life. Like yeah. they feel high and then they it's get hard caught. to sustain it. It's hard. It's yeah, hard yeah, yeah. to sustain that uh, level of energy that is required to live in that life. It's really hard to sustain that constant watch watch out as well. I am. Um, I'm gonna. I'm. I really like talking about things that you watch on TV and why I watch them. And I have to say, I'm quite. I'm quite a sucker for foreign, um, non English. Um, and it, oh, what's the name? Something noir. So, Film noir. Yeah. And there's just something. Kind of like a 50 style black and white sort of film. Yeah, noir. totally. Yeah, yeah. There's just, and I love, I love the subtitled um, international drama, crime, thriller type thing. That's, I, 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 for some reason, I don't find that particularly heavy because I think I find wow. it so, so far out of my sphere that it's entertaining to me. Yeah. I was thinking uh, there's a couple of things that have been uh, not, I'm not annoyed about. We've got to do lockdown to kind of get back to where we were. So we've got to do lockdown, but um, I had a haircut booked in for Thursday. That went oh. away. So I'm about, a, I'm about two months overdue. Um, oh. But also uh, the new Ryan Reynolds film, Free Guy uh, started last week and I was going to take the kids this weekend, but oh. I, get, I know we find out tomorrow at three o'clock, but I get the feeling we'll probably still be in lockdown this weekend. We'll see. I, you know what? Hey, that is totally natural. I'm actually, um, I get broken hearted about some of the things, especially around my kids. So in the first, in the very, very, the very, very first lockdown, Pat, my beautiful son, who's now 15, he had been um, practicing and working so hard for their kapahaka for the um, secondary schools kapahaka here in Auckland right. which is a yeah. which is an absolute institution here and it was his first time ever and I've never seen my son so dedicated and committed to getting up early what to go to school for practices and then I saw them do what they call like a like a pre -re uh, pre dress rehearsal for the Fano and I cried and it was only the pre -re dress uh -huh. rehearsal and then, and then lockdown happened, or actually that year it may, no, it was lockdown happened. And I was devastated. I was devastated for them. I saw their little hearts putting everything into it. 
this this particular lockdown, my my beautiful daughter, who's thirteen, she had made it into her school um, her top school netball team to go to the wow. a big tournament in Tauranga. She um, they were going to do their beautiful choir performance on to, uh, Wednesday night in the Auckland Town Hall, and they sing amazingly. Like I get that disappointment, and I feel it. I'm I'm still quite heartbroken about some of these things that the kids miss out on. I think what I've learned though, I, you know what, it took me a long time to get over Manawa not performing at his um, kapahaka. But yeah. do you know what? He got to perform, um, he got to perform this year. Um, so I guess what I've started to realize is that they're, they're gonna have some more of those chances and opportunities at, at other massive cool things in their life. And it's the only thing that sort of, keeps my heart from fully breaking because I'm like, okay, no, this is, we had to do this. They're going to miss out on some stuff, but they're going to, we'll just make sure that they keep getting these opportunities at a later time. So I guess it's that yeah. sort of, we're going to have to delay some things. Yeah. Well, and again, I, I don't want, I don't need nor necessarily want your sort of opinion on this because, you know, of, of who you are and what you are as the co-leader of the Greens. Um, <laughs> but I get the feeling that we're going to have an effect of this current lockdown for the rest of the year. I'm not saying we're going to be in lockdown for the rest of the year. It's not my opinion. I know what but, you're saying. You know, after the last yeah, lockdown, yeah. there was kind of a three or four month period where things weren't quite normal. We were level yeah. three and then we were level two. And yeah. so then it, it might end up being that we are actually, you know, affected by this. And, and the, as you say, those sort of events and that sort of stuff for the, for the foreseeable future. But, you know, yeah. the, the, the objective is to, get back to what we had because what we had was pretty awesome yeah i reckon and i'm really grateful i i was so i was so overjoyed when i like we got closer and closer to the time for the secondary schools kapahaka and i you know i was like let's get there let's get there no community outbreak no because we <laughs> we had just come through some community outbreak we had community outbreak up here in auckland remember in february you yeah. know so it was looking a little tight there the kapahaka um festival was in march so we just you know we just made it and so you know yep i I wouldn't be surprised just just to the due to the nature of this tricky delta. I wouldn't be surprised if we are wanting to take as hard a stance as possible for however long that requires, really. And all of it, all of it is to lead to us getting out properly when we can. Can are you okay? Because I know we said half past. It's a little bit after. Are you all right for the time? Yeah, being? yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's right. keep going. Why not? We're on a I, roll. Yeah, I was going to say, is it? Is it realistic to ask, you know, a, a, a politician, you know, to answer a question as a citizen, or do you always have to have the politician's hat on? Because like, what I, I want to ask is, as a, as a citizen, yeah, what would you say to those people who are kind of protesting against lockdown? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question to ask me as a citizen, and for me being mm. a citizen, for me being a citizen is as a as a as a wahine Māori, as a member of my iwi in Te Tai Tokiro and Te Tai Rāwhiti, um, as a mama and nana, by the way, Pat, I don't know if we've <laughs> yeah, spoken. No, I know yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as a nana and a mama and all of those things that are dear to me that make me a citizen, um, I wish that people could understand that that all of these decisions are purely about caring for each other and I would absolutely say that as a citizen that this is about us caring for each other this is about us um, Delta and COVID are the enemies here you know um, and this is about us caring for each other to do the best we can to look after each other to realize that a lot of people um, are in totally different circumstances a lot of people are far more vulnerable than I am in this situation. And I can, you know, I can only speak for myself as a citizen. A lot of people need all of us to take care of each other. Um, I think about my my elderly um, generations, aunties, uncles, nannies, my, my own parents. I think about our young babies and our young ones who are less able to, to depend on themselves. And this is just about 
taking care of each other. And, you know, it's just those values, really. This is not about, this is not about living in some sort of a, some sort of a cruel regime. The COVID is cruel and Delta is cruel. And this is about making sure our hospitals are freed up for our pakeke who don't have COVID but need help, for our any of our people who may not have COVID but still need our health system to care for them. This is about making sure that we can return to our education and our work and our community lives as soon as we possibly can in a way that is meaningful and will last, you know. So I, I hope people can can reflect on those values and their place as citizens in a community as well. Yeah, I agree with you. And I mean, I, I it does frustrate me. I mean, like Billy Takaha, for example, not to, again, have to commentary. I'd love to actually have him on as a conversation because I find that kind of fascinating to go, what is this about? You know, but also don't want to then push more of that out there yeah. to, to then maybe bring more people under those yeah. positions because I, I find it fascinating that if people are like you know i'll wear a seatbelt the government tells me to wear a seatbelt so i will because it keeps me safer yeah. you know yeah, yeah. The, the government has warnings on cigarette packets yeah. and the and science yeah, says it totally. might cause me cancer so i'll listen what stay at home and stay safe go fuck yourself you know it's like it just yeah. i'm just and, I, and i'm not yeah. saying that i'm not saying that there's not a line somewhere i'm sure there is a line where yeah. all of us as citizens will go okay enough is enough but i yeah. think we're so far from that line right now i just it's frustrating. Yeah. It's the same with um it's the same with mask wearing, eh? I know it's the same sort of drivers that are out there with some of our communities. I think Pat, look, I what I do acknowledge, and this is really important as 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 Maori as well, is what I do acknowledge is that for, for many generations, especially since colonization, if I'm honest, a lot of families, a lot of people, and not just Maori, have felt have felt trampled on by governments, by successive um, yeah. establishments and figures in authority. You know, this is the classic Trump success, sort of a sort of a lean in. So I do acknowledge that, and I I want to say I'm really grateful to the people in the community who work hard to bring those people back in, to call them back in, to give those people a sense of belonging for collective good, as opposed to people who have been marginalised and have felt disrespected by figures and institutes of authority for many generations in their family, yeah. we need to provide them with a better sense of belonging. Otherwise, they will find that sense of belonging and rationale in, in unhelpful places. You know, so I know that there are people every day in our communities who try to do that bridging work, who try mm -hmm. to bring all of our people in, and I'm really grateful for them. I don't have time to do that myself, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, and I and I find myself not wanting to go down the rabbit hole with those dialogues either. Um, yeah, yeah. But I can absolutely use my use my privilege platform to just keep putting up the values of what we actually stand for. Well, I think it was Russell Howard when he was over here on his tour. Um, and he, he I, I saw him, I managed to talk to him actually, he came on the podcast and then I managed to see him in Dunedin, which was great. And he, he does this little spiel about how, how wonderful New Zealand is, how wonderful we are that, you know, Jacinda said, go inside. We all went, okay. We all walked inside and then we came out <laughs> and she went, no, another four. And okay. We went back inside. But because of that, we, we because of that, we had Russell Howard coming and doing a tour of like 20, locations yeah. but the thing he would say is he goes um if you're not happy with the way things are and he, and he did some kind of you know imagery around oh, and he turned the tv on and he went how about the uk and he showed you know he's like yeah. saying it's terrible and he goes they're not about how about the us and i was like that's yeah. that's look at the scoreboard i think that's quite that just came out of tonight's conversation i i quite like yeah. that the scoreboard at the moment is i think in favor of the government and the medical advice we're under. And yes, there are some fans of the opposition, be they a small and insignificant number, but I think mm. the, 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 the population at the moment is, is on the side of that. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. And I just want to thank oh, my husband. Oh yeah. <laughs> cheers. Want to cheers. Cheers. I just want to thank my beautiful husband. We're live on we're live on the um, fireside chat, babe. 
for, for responding to my message on air. Um, <laughs> it's nice. You can, you can, you could, you should tell everybody what you need now. Uh, and saying <laughs> that, we'll, we'll, we'll let you go. I just also want to say it's not really a part of this conversation, but mentioning Russell Howard, I'm a huge fan of the English comedian Sean Locke. Sean Locke on oh, eight out of ten cats. Gosh. Gosh. Devastating to hear of, of his right. passing today. Right. 58 years oh. old, gone from cancer. I, I think in the last series of eight out of ten cats, I'm not saying it, I don't know what it was, but I remember I, I might have even tweeted going, What's up with Sean Locke's, Locke's voice? Something had changed, but devastating to hear of his passing today. So sad. One of the if people don't know who he is, just go to YouTube and look up um, Carrot in the Box. Carrot Aww. in the Box, one of the funniest clips you will ever see on the internet with Sean Last Locke. The a. And, yeah, just, just, I mean, like, yeah. it's not like anyone he knows is going to see this, but. You know, Aro Hatu is whānau because it's it's devastating to lose anyone, devastating to lose anyone younger than they should, and also such an amazing talent. It was I woke up and saw that in my timeline this morning was was sad, it was very sad. So, just mentioning. Thank you, it. Pat. No, thank you for for sort of bringing us to an end on a really appropriate note. Actually, I I was shocked. I have to say, I hadn't picked up what you had picked up, and when I saw it on my timeline this morning, I was just completely so shocked. And you always I always feel it. Like it's not like we know these people personally or had a relationship with them, but that respect for the talent and contribution to humanity, I suppose, I just always feel a sense of, oh, oh, that's a little bit ouch. That's quite a bit ouch. And then always mm. immediately thinking, oh, and his family have lost a whole a whole loved person. He wasn't just a, a world star, you know, to millions of us. He was an actual whole loved person and they will be, feeling pretty mummy right now so it is important to send our love out pat no matter whether they hear it or not we put it out to the universe it's really important so let's uh let's raise a glass to sean Locke. what an amazing sure, man Locke. what an amazing talent and as you say you know people are feeling sad about that this this day fans of his not to use that as a segue into lockdowns and vaccines but Losing anyone is a sad thing. What we're trying to do in New Zealand for people who are watching us internationally at the moment is we're trying to beat this thing again to yes, keep people are. healthy and save their lives. I don't yes, want a, a family in New Zealand to have to go through a loss like a family in the UK is right now of a person that we do all know, but he's still someone's dad and someone's brother and yeah, someone's right. probably granddad and that kind of stuff as well. Right. Thank you. Kia ora, Pat. I really love that. And yeah, best wishes to all of you out there. Um, know that we're here, know that we're caring and reach out if you can to someone if you're just feeling it. Yeah. Lovely yeah, chat, and all, Pat. Yeah. And also people who are online right now, you know, we've got people already who was uh, who are saying, here, here, what a legend, you know? Yes. So Steve's on there saying that. And so, love yeah. that, so people. Steve. People know. Hey, Martima, thanks so much. For people who are tuning in, it's a bit different doing a live stream because if people watch the podcast, they start at the beginning and they get the introduction and they know who we're speaking to and they know everything. But I've, there's quite a few people who now tune in from the UK because of a, a certain in incident that happened in the last few months with me and a flat earther. Um, so <laughs> if you're watching from, from the international world, um, Martima Davidson, co-leader of New Zealand's Greens, um, probably our next Deputy Prime Minister. Is that right? Can I oh, say that? It's so naughty. <laughs> <laughs> and, From um, Manurewa in Auckland in my bedroom. <laughs> and look, you are a, an absolute, and people say this is a bit wanky, but this is our third time in 200 episodes. So you are an absolute friend of the podcast. And I'm sure it. we will see either you or one of your other um, green colleagues in the next wee while, certainly leading up to the to the um to the election next year and it is next year eh? 2023 so. 2023 oh, okay. not quite uh, ready for next year a uh, little right. bit more of a rest <laughs> right. 2023 all along oh, we'll, for sure. we'll, hey, see before, we'll see you before yeah, that, you mate. will you will i love coming on your show and i'm glad we took a quick a quick spontaneous almost opportunity to do it to, today i'm really glad yeah yeah, and this is, for people who are just also tuning in, this is the Department of Conversation. Uh, this is a kind of special series we're doing called Fireside Chats. See my fire, it's my fire up there. <laughs> and in the evenings during New Zealand's lockdown, we're going to reach out to a few people to come and just have a chat, give you guys the opportunity to kind of hang out with us. We know from experience that in the evenings, for some people, it becomes uh, a bit darker, metaphorically and literally, yeah, totally. a bit scarier. We go inside our heads and we start thinking. So, you know, 
go like us on Facebook, follow us on YouTube, get notified when our next guests are coming up. I've had a bunch of people already say yes. And uh, thanks, Marama, for being number one. Um, number one in the heart as well. And um, oh, we'll beautiful. we'll keep doing this. And I'm sure we'll talk. I'll send you that. I'll, I'll text you when I once we finish up this with that, um, oh, that name of that go. show once I find out what it is. Do and do. other than that, be safe and cheers for your time. Thanks, Pat. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you all. Paul